Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to the first episode of Favorite Live Album by Year. That's right. This is the show we're going to be doing each and every day throughout the month of September here in 2021. It is September 1st. Welcome, everybody. Uh, basically, the theme of the show, each day, I'm going to pick a different year. All right, we're starting in 1968. Each day is going to be a different year. I'm going to pick my favorite live album released in that year and a runner-up. The reason why we're starting in 1968, 1968 is kind of where the whole live album craze started across multiple musical genres. Prior to that, in the earlier part of the 60s, you had a lot of jazz albums, jazz live albums, right? That was a regular thing, but it wasn't until about 68 that you saw, <coughs> excuse me, rock bands starting to put out live albums. And then, you know, within a couple of years, boom, you've got, you know, live albums from jazz and fusion and prog and hard rock and regular rock, soft rock, I mean, psychedelia, all over the place. You had live albums popping up everywhere, each and every year, each and every month, right? And that continued for quite a while. So we're basically going to go from 1968 all the way to the late 90s. Each day of September, a different year. So today, 1968. My, you know, it was kind of, it was, it was really only two choices here for me for 1968. So it was just a matter of which one I chose over the other. Uh, some might find that my runner-up might have been the better choice for my main pick, but there's a reason why it's going to be my runner-up. But I, for me, the only real number one choice released uh, here in the U.S. anyway, August 1968. Um, also released in the UK at that same time for the Durham label. Okay, recorded at Kluke's Clique in London, actually uh, earlier that year in May. Ten years after, Undead. First live album from Ten Years After. This is the band, and it's pretty much in its infancy. Uh, this is uh, Alvin Lee and Company early on, before they became the bigger band that they, they became shortly thereafter. Uh, originally released as a single album set. But as we've seen with the CD reissue, uh, specifically mine here, uh, expanded to include most, if not the entire concert they played that night, right? Which is how it should have been released initially, but it was not. Uh, originally, like I said, one album, single LP, comprised of five songs. Uh, you got uh, I May Be Wrong, But I Won't Be Wrong Always, okay, which kicks things off. Um, great track, lots of jamming. There is a very strong kind of early blues, early rock and roll and jazz element going on throughout this live album. So the band clearly showing their chops, but they would become like a true force on the blues rock scene and fully embrace psychedelia within like a year or two. Okay, so this is pretty early on. The band playing clubs and just kind of honing their chops, but really sticking to like kind of like blues standards and jazz standards and early rock and roll. And that's what this is all about, but it's no less captivating, right? Band is cooking, firing on all cylinders, and Alvin Lee, you know, just doing his thing. So we got uh, we got that song, which is an Alvin Lee original. We got Woodchopper's Ball, which is a Woody Herman, Joe Bishop uh, song that they do. Very, very good. Spider in My Web, Alvin Lee original once again. Then they do uh, a cover of Summertime by George Gershwin. Which leads into the drum solo from Rick Lee, which is Shantung Cabbage, okay? Which has got to have, you know, all live albums from this time period, right? Going forward, there's drum solos on most of them. And then, of course, you got the uh, showstopper at the end of the album, which is I'm Going Home, another Alvin Lee original. Which, if you compare this version to the Woodstock version, this is pretty tame, actually. Uh, the Woodstock version would take it to new levels, and that's kind of basically, you know, that was about a year later. That, or exactly a year later, uh, that is what really would catch pulled this man into superstardom. Uh, here, I'm going home. A little bit tamer, not quite as fire and explosive, but you know, Alvin's speedy pentatonic licks are all over the place on this album. The whole band is just sounding really, really good. Uh, and again, this is Alvin on guitars and vocals, Chick Churchill on organ, Rick Lee on drums, and Leo Lyons on bass. That is the classic lineup of Ten Years After. Uh, I don't know. I you know, Ten Years After has that other the the, the other live album that came out a couple of years later, which uh, you know really almost kind of long long-winded, lots of solos. Uh, the regular song tracks are phenomenal. I always found that album a little too long. That's like almost like a little bit too excessive, as great as it is. Uh, I kind of find sometimes I, I enjoy listening to this one a little bit more. 
Although the Fillmore West live album, for me, I think is the quintessential 10 years after live album. But this is really good. Early 10 years after Undead. Dig this a lot. So that's my pick for today for 1968. My runner-up could have been my number one. I almost changed my mind this morning. Almost changed my mind this morning. Uh, it was also obviously released in 1968. It came out exactly on uh, here in the U.S. June 1968, August 9th in the U.K. Uh, for the Polydor label. Recorded at uh, Winterland and the Fillmore in San Francisco, California. Of course, I'm talking about Cream Wheels of Fire. The reason why this did not make my number one pick is because, A, it's not a true live album through and through. All right, you got basically half of its studio stuff, half of its live. Uh, I think the live stuff is absolutely terrific. I almost made this my number one because of Spoonful alone which is just 16 minutes of violent shredding from Clapton and Bruce and Baker. And, uh, it, you know, Spoonful is absolutely massive on here. Absolutely massive. Uh, Crossroads, their version of Crossroads, is this is probably the definitive version of Crossroads. Okay, great. For that alone, I almost nudged this up to number one. But, you know, you got Toad, which is cool for what it is, but it's just it's just a big, long drum solo from Ginger Baker, as amazing as it is. And then you got Train Time, all right, which is basically just like a kind of rhythm and blues tune with tons of harmonica. You know how, I, how much I guys love the harmonica. So for me, I couldn't put this number one, A, because it's like, you know, half of the album is studio stuff, which, you know, white room sitting on top of the world, passing the time, and as you said... Great, I know, legendary, uh, you know, press rat and warthog, politician, you know, born under a bad sign. Those were the days, deserted cities of the heart. I mean, you know, fantastic stuff right there. Uh, but I, I, you know, was I going to give this the top spot basically for Spoonful and Crossroads because that's what it came down to? I couldn't quite do it. Although that comprises 20 minutes as opposed to like, you know, 35 or 7 for this. But anyway, both fantastic, right? Even though this is this is the true true live album through and through, and this is a half and halfer, still pretty fantastic, right? So either way you go, can't go wrong with either. But today, uh, ten years after Undead is my pick for album of 1968, coming in as my honorable mention or my runner-up, Wheels of Fire by Cream, starting in like 1969 and every year going forward, basically for the next decade, uh, you have a lot of contenders for the throne each and every day. So I, you know, what I've done so far is I've gone through like the first, I think like eight years, okay, and uh, kind of done my picks. But there are a couple of years where, man, there's like a dozen great live albums. And it's just, it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm sure I'm going to change my mind uh, every day before I record these. And uh, this will be fun because I, I love live albums. As you know, we have done live album things here on the channel quite a bit over the years. And uh, I like resurrecting this every so often. So here's the drill, all right? This is going to be each and every day. You're going to get my picks, which you've just gotten. Now it's your turn in the comments below. I want to see everybody contributing. I want to see comments. I want to see hundreds and hundreds of comments, even thousands, because I know we're going to get thousands of people watching these episodes. I want to see thousands of people chiming in. What is your favorite live album from that year, and what is your runner-up? Okay, And it'll be really cool to kind of see what everybody's putting in there. So, uh, yeah, live albums. Let's celebrate the live album here in 2021 in September as we're all kind of hoping and waiting for, you know, live shows to fully come back on a full-time basis as we try to break away from this thing called COVID-19. And let's celebrate that and look forward to that by talking about live albums all month. So see you every morning here on the channel talking about favorite live albums from a specific year. Tomorrow is 1969. Stay tuned for that. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Uh, stay tuned. You'll also get uh, a new product review today. We got a new, I, th I think we're going to get one today because I really have not listened to a lot of new stuff over the last week. So you'll probably get one today. And then tomorrow we've got the Monsters Den. Chris Allo and myself will be talking about the Camp Blood series. Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the epic flops, album flops in rock and roll history. And then Sunday, we have album homework assignment. Stephen Reed from In the Prog Seat going up against Simon Bray, my UK connection going head to head. Can't wait to see uh, them talk about their assignments. That's coming up on Sunday. And then, of course, things start all over again on Monday 
with the Hudson Valley Squares. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content. If you'd like to make a channel donation to help us continue to keep buying uh, new products, new albums to review, new books to read, new video and movies to watch, um, filling in holes in collections so we can do more album rankings, that sort of thing. That's where the, the donations go to. I thank you for those uh, ahead of time, as well as the link to Sea of Tranquility's merch page below. We can get all sorts of Sea of Tranquility swag. All right, and the link to seatranquility.org, which is our webzine, which has been on the internet now for 20 years this year. Thanks for watching IMP Pardo. See you here real soon, all the damn time. Take care. Bye bye.